Hey everybody, welcome to the episode of Throwback Thursday. I'm back with Danny, and we're gonna be throwing down another Warhammer Quest Silver Tower uh, adventure. This is gonna be round two, as Lord Castellans, his buddy the Battle Mage, and then the Tenebral Shard and Mist Weaver Psy. Is it Psy, S-A-I-H? I feel like that's Gaelic. Psy, I feel like it's a Gaelic or something like that. Psy, Welsh maybe? I don't know, something like that. Um, we'll, be, uh, we'll be going another adventure. So we've wandered the labyrinth. Uh, we lost a treasure. Oh, we didn't lose any treasures. We, we lost a skill. Your shard lost a skill basically during the time that you wandered the labyrinth. Because basically the idea is here, this is like a, this is a, uh, a, 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 a huge labyrinthine like locked out of time place inside the silver tower. It's all linked by portals. There's no like actual layout to the place. And until you get tested again by the Gaunt Summoner, it could be like a thousand years in between wanderings. So you can forget things, treasures can get lost, all that stuff can happen. The idea is it removes some of the bookkeeping from the game, and it means that your linked adventures are a little bit simpler. There's not as much that happens afterwards. The new version though, which is the Shadows Under Heldenhammer, Shadows Under Helden Hall, has more of that post-game stuff in it. But we're gonna play through this one first. Um, and so yeah, we'll show you the current state of the heroes. They've each got one skill because they've got some renown in the first mission. Um, and we'll place them in the portal and then show you the layout for the next adventure. So here's the Lord Castellant. He's got the Divine Will um, skill. He gets to, other players can reroll attack rolls of one if they're in the same chamber as me, which is super handy. Battle Mage has Eye of Fate, which I kind of wish the Lord Castellant had gotten. Uh, put a stun marker on him if you use a two plus die. While it's there, you can reroll saving rolls of one for this hero. Kind of handy, keep him alive. Miss Weasel Versailles has the Jaws of Death. Coordinate four plus. Give the hero dice to another player that has not yet taken their turn. While they have this dice, their weapons hit on uh, sorry, their weapons hit values are one plus against adversaries adjacent to your hero. So you get a bodyguard skill. And the T-Roll Shard is evasive. Before making a save roll, roll a die. If results higher than the attack roll, you dodge his eye with no effect. If you're swift, which he is. Um, if it's the same, basically. If he can meet the attack roll, he gets basically invulnerable save. So as we are not doing the first trial, we are going to be setting up the Trials of Kamon, which is the Metallicors on page 60. In this region of the Silver Tower, the champion's foes seem especially well armed. They bear exquisite ornamental blades and were weighed down with glittering armor and bags of riches. After battling through another wave of these godly attired enemies, the champions reached a perfectly spherical chamber whose walls were liquid steel. A single slender bridge of elaborately worked copper arced out of that chamber. Uh, as its end was a rippling disc of gold, hovering in the air like a certain dancing, a curtain dancing in the breeze. Here it seemed was a portal. Behind the champions heard another great host of enemies gathering to attack. Preferring the unknown to such heavily armed attackers, the champions fled along the copper bridge and plunged through the liquid gold beyond. So began the next great trial. So it's the, the golden symbol with an arrow up. Break the exploration deck. Take the nine exploration cards from the k icon. Find the Fighting Pit, uh, which is the Grand Chamber, and shuffle it with the two random k cards. So the Fighting Pit will be our boss encounter this time around. Uh, it and three random cards are shuffled in the bottom. The remaining six cards have gone on top. Uh, so it goes down to Destiny. Let's see what the Destiny roll is for the first turn. We'll start exploring. Double one, so a random ha event happens, and then we've got a... Turn. Oh, that's right, not in the first turn. Uh, and then we got a 6-5-4, but they do get discarded. Uh, and so... I believe we'll just give you the initiative. Sure. Mr. Tini Rochard can go first, oh, as he does. Miss Weaver. Miss Weaver, okay. Six, five, three, two. Um, actually, that was a stupid thing. Because you do. can't explore, can you? <laughs> just start with Shard. I was going to say. Because you can't go anywhere. Why not? Yep. And you can burn that one to explore. Yeah, one to explore. It's going to be the Mysterious Vortex. And there's a portal right here. So, like some hideous optical illusion, everything in this chamber stretched and ran like tallow towards a roaring maelstrom which is blocked in the middle. Place exploration guard next to the chamber. Models cannot move into the vortex space if there's no adversaries on the board at the end of the round. The heroes can leap into the vortex if all of them agree to do so, knowing there is unlikely to be a way back. If they do this, read passage 86. We can jump into a vortex. Mm -hmm. Hmm. There's no encounter, so unless unless we get a random encounter from the next uh, activation roll, we could all just go in there and jump in the vortex and see yeah. what happens. I feel like that's the play. I feel like we can't not jump into the vortex. <laughs> so I'm gonna move. Sure. One, two, three, four. Okay. And that's it. Guys. I'm just gonna we're just gonna have to start walking and activating defensive tech and see what happens. So let's get you walk in with the boss. Uh, not the boss, but the. Um, What's his name? The uh, Lord Castellans. He's got a four, a five, a three, and a drop this one to walk. One, two, three. And I don't really have anything else to do, 
My lantern's not going to have any effects right now, so I guess we're just going to burn these dice and be over to you. Miss Weaver, I'll burn my one to walk. Yep. Can you put a three down for defensive tech? Because it may be relevant when we get placed. Glimmer Mist. All right, and that's going to be over to the Battle Mage. He gets a one, so we're going to use the one to go one, two, three. Use the six to put up the Arcane Shield. I don't have anything to shoot my other stuff at, but we will assign um, this two to Eye of Fate, so everyone can reroll ones, or so I can reroll ones. Going in! Let's, in. let's see what it is! We have to read Passage 86. With prayers to the gods, the champions step off the brink and are plunged into the whirling maelstrom below. Colors and lights flash past while a storm of half clips, images, and cacophonous sounds fill their minds to bursting. It was over as quickly as it began, the vortex spilling the champions out into a new and mysterious reach of the tower. Set aside the heroes and this chamber's exploration deck, then clear away all the chambers as though they'd vanished at the end of the round. Then set up the ingress chamber and place the exploration deck next to it as if you just started over. Starting with the rune mark player and going clockwise, each player sets up their hero in the ingress chamber. Basically the game restarts <laughs> and we're down a tile, which is going to be handy because it means that we're one, one step closer now. So we'll start a new hero phase, um, but first we have to roll to see random encounters. Uh, quadruple twos, but nobody has any treasure, so we have a three to work with. Boop. Right, so I guess now Lord Castellan's gonna go and explore. Let's see what he gets. He gets a one, two fours, and a three. And he will activate the one to explore and see what the card is. The Warrior's Gaze. Two statues stood here, twisted archetypes of warrior and wizard. Uh, for all its strangeness, some hint of nobility still clung to the warrior statue. And beneath its approving gaze, the champions felt empowered to do heroic deeds. Roll an encounter table A. If a hero in this chamber gains any renown, they gain one more point than normal. Encounter A. Uh, so it's going to be a three, which is going to be the Skaven Deathrunner. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. Well, that's going to be a problem. <laughs> I guess we walk in and start trying to murder that guy then. Uh, so he's going to go three and go one, two. Ah, uh, sorry, actually he's got one, because he can't break off. And he's going to start stabbing. So I need a four plus. Blam! Nope. Try again, I need a four plus. Two damage. I'm going to burn the last one and try and do it again. Four plus. No, no damage. Oh, uh, yeah, that's it. What are you good, sir? Shard. Shard's going to go. So he gets for action dice. Yeah, six. We need that six to jump and make the murders. Party time. Party time? Oh wait, we have to roll to see who the target is. We forgot about oh, that. Yeah. Um, so, rolling for my heroes. Zzz, zzz, zzz. Yes. We're rolling off against uh, Castellan, because I got a one as well. That's going to be Castellan. We're going to Shadow Strike for his six. Jump anywhere on the board. Jump into base to base. Start stabbing. Let me start with Reaper Gauntlets. All right, two plus. Three, three plus. Oh, that's right, three plus, yep. Ah. Oh, and he misses. It's okay. Bladed Barbs. Two plus, does a wound. One damage. Yep. Goes One to three. Damage. Again, bladed barbs. Goes to four. Alright, Wiz. Get him. Yeah. So we got the six, which is what we needed. Some twos, threes, and fours. Alright, let's start blasting. Three plus into the death loop. And we hit him. D3 wounds. He's at four. Now he's at six. Try again. Three plus. No, he fails. All right, we're going to move. Whoop. One, two. We're going to activate uh, Arcane Shield, which will give us a Renown. And we gain an extra Renown because of the Warrior's Gaze. Wait. Yep, if they gain a Renown, they gain twice as much as normal. So he gets two. I didn't realize it was only pinned if I was already adjacent. So I'm actually going to go one, two, three and move over here. Because I don't want to be mailing with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and you get to do your shy. He's got six wounds. He has thirteen, so he's a little he's a little ways from dead. And you got two bolts potentially. Move. So one, two, three, over there. Hide behind my wizard. Yep. <laughs> and we'll do illusionary assault. Okay, sounds good. Three plus hits. D three wounds. wounds. Goes to nine. He's not feeling great. Do four more, and he's dead. I'll do another illusionary assault. Three plus. No. Misses. And Bring your last one, and that's turn. Let's see what the Skaven does. Two. All right, so he's gonna try and assassinate. He gets one attack, hits on a three, does D6 wounds. Under my Castellan, because he's the target. Hits. Oh, three plus save. 
We're good. Nice. <laughs> that was oh, terrifying. Good news is he didn't duplicate. Let's see what happens. We've got triple twos. No one has any treasure cards, so it's not gonna matter. And then a four and a five. Are we going with the Tebral Shard? Going with the Shard. Get him! And you can start stabifying. Reaper Gauntlets. Three plus. Hits. D3. Does one. He's got three left. Bladed Barb. Bladed Barb, okay. Hits. Does one. He's got two left. Same, same. He's got one left. <laughs> and actually, uh, if you roll a six for your attack rolls, you can immediately make another action of your choice without making a dice. Okay. So, technically, this one would have been free. Okay. And then I get another free one. Okay, because they can chain? Yeah. Two. Does that damage? So he's dead. You get D3 Renown. Plus one for the Warrior's Gaze. So you get two, three total. That clears the room. Uh, so the room's clean, so we could respite at the end of the turn just by burning everything else, or we can keep on moving. So we're at the point where we can explore again. What we have to do is we actually have to deal into two different paths. And this could make the game significantly longer because there's going to be two different potentially ends to this. Uh, you start at the bottom card and you deal back and forth at both exits until there is a new path for each. So which one are you going to go to? So we're going to spend this three to walk. Okay, one, two. And then spin this four to, to explore. Let's see what it is. Looting the dead. Glinted grave goods heaped with the feet of strange sarcophagi from inside which wafted an acrid reap. Put four treasure cards face down next to this chamber. Heroes may make an action while adjacent to the sarcophagus. Four plus, roll a die. If it's a five, six, you can take one of the treasure cards. If there's also one, read passage 50. You can reroll this die if you are swift. All right, and there is no encounters in here, but we can start looting for some treasure. I'm going to send... Uh, the let's go, Mr. Kestelt. So we got a one, a three, and two fours. Spending my one, I'm going to go one, two, three. Spending my three, I'm gonna go one, two, three. Spending one of my fours, I'm gonna loot the dead on a five or six. Nope, I rolled a one. We're gonna read passage 50. <laughs> I missed a terrible grinding of cogs and hissing of gaseous vapors. The strange sarcophagus swung slowly open. Within was revealed a cadaverous being swathed in wrappings and moldering robes. The terrible revenant's eyes opened wide and a hellish light shone forth in the depths. With a dusty dry moan and a clutter of cogs, the magister stepped forth, summoning an ancient source to strike the champions down. Discard all the treasure cords. The runemark player may then set up a Karak Adept next to the sarcophagus, as close to the searching hero as possible. The magister acts like any other Karak Adept, but the withered form contains just enough residual power for one last display of its former prowess. On a draw of D3, add two to the result, and look it up on the Gaunt Summoner's behavior chart, then resolve it immediately as if the Adept was a Gaunt Summoner. D3 plus two, and he will, uh-oh, five. Roiling Inferno, the Gaunt Summoner removes so that there are as many heroes in his chamber as possible and then he attacks with his infernal flames so he'll have to try and break off I guess because he's stuck and he needs to make a one plus agility so he doesn't care he's gonna go over here whoop and he's gonna make an attack with infernal flames d3 attacks area four plus one damage attacks so two attacks on everybody four plus so one damage everybody in the square your dodge Nope. nope, and then you get your armor save. Nope, nope. and then uh, you get the... Where is it? You get the dodge here? That was Wait, no, you get your armor save for her. Six plus? Nope. Uh, does my arcane shield go away before I activate? You're actually going to pass, because as far as I can tell, you don't pick up the action dice off Mystic Shield until he acts again and rolls his action dice to activate. So um, you got plus one to your armor save right now. Uh, and then he himself on a five. Nope. All right, and he's now done. So Lord Castellant gets to go. Um, and he's going, because this guy gets to activate basically magically when he appears, and he'll activate again during the, the, the creature phase. I'm going to roll or use this four to move over to here. And I'm going to use this five to hit you with my halberd. And I do six two damage. Miss Wreath gets a bunch of dice. You can zap him with a bolt? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll start with Illusionary Assault. Three plus. Hits. D3. Three plus. He's dead. Blah. You get two renown because you did it under the Warrior's Gaze. 
which is super handy. Can I move twice? Three you times. get to go eight. Three times? Okay. So you go 12, but not enough left to explore. Uh, okay, twice in the Glimmerist. Sounds like a plan. It's over to the mage. What does he get? Oh, mage! Gonna get some sixes all day. Oh wait, he's only got three because he's wounded. My bad. He still got my six. <laughs> so I'll use this one to heal. Whoop. I'll use this one to move. One, two, three. I'll use this one for shield. That is turn. No monsters or adversaries, uh, which means we could recuperate. Recuperating at the end, uh, you can take off D3 wounds. And if you roll a four plus, you can also grab a treasure card. Yes, a treasure card. And the other one uh, takes off wound and gets treasure card. So I'm do yours first. Treasure for the Mistweeth Shea. Gets a source for a shield. Whenever your hero suffers a wound on a four, five, or six, it's deflected and has no effect. And on one, the shield, cr the scroll crumbles into dust. Uh, and then your next one, Tenebral Shard. Alarial's Kiss, you may drink this potion before uh, making your action roll. Roll a die, each wound marker on your card on a two or three, replace it with a stun marker on a four, five, or six, remove it entirely. Mm. It's like a healing potion. Lord Castellant just finds a treasure. The Celestrium, a clom cl yeah, complex clockwork amulet of interlocking lenses. Discard this card at any time to look at the top three cards of ex any exploration deck without changing their order. You can share this information with the other players if you wish. Battle Mage. Gonna get one as well. Gonna find Basilisk's Tongue. You can read this scroll at any point during your turn. Roll dice for each adversary on your chamber. If the result is higher than their vigor, they're turned to stone and kill them. <laughs> then discard this card. All right, new turn. Let's roll for fate. Maybe we'll get some encounters in here and we can have some <laughs> bonus XP. Uh, double twos, which is nothing. Double sixes, which is a random encounter. And this one is our only friend. <laughs> so let's see what happens. We got. A 31. It's a Grout Scuttling attack. It's going to be amazing. Uh, each hero is stunned, then roll a die and place as many Grout Scuttlings next to the board. Starting with the Runemark player and going clockwise, each player sets those up as close to a hero as possible until they've all been set up. D6. Ah, it's just one. Boo. So it's going to be right here. I have him next to him. All right. Do it, hero. I'm going to use this one. I'm activating my Battle Mage. He gets everything he wants. <laughs> We're gonna punk this little guy. So we're gonna use the one from off the battle board to try and hit you with my staff on a four. We do, take a damage. Burn this three to do it again, four plus. Nope, he lives. Burn this four to do it again. Oh, <laughs> oh, I want the renown. Kill him! Oh, it's the worst. Where's he gonna go? Gets double sixes and a one. So. I guess I'll just illusionary assault. Makes sense. Going for it, yep. Gets it. D3 doesn't matter. You're not in the room with the gaze, though. We've got two actions left. One to move. Yep. Blah, blah. And then one to move glimmer. To sure. Glimmer mist. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, I'm going to go with Lord Castellant. He is going to use the Celestrium right now to discard this card and look at the top three cards of the exploration deck, because I want to know if this is the if this is the right path. <sighs> And it is. <laughs> Roll my actions, and we're gonna get three, three, five. And let's go move. One, two, three. Move again. One. We're not even gonna go in because we're just gonna wait till we all catch up here, and he's done. What are you? I'll shard us up. Uh -huh. Take a walk. Yeah, I'll just. I'm gonna just teleport there. Okay. Bloop. Looks good. That's not. Ah, it is a square. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's turn it looks like, um, and that means we are going to roll some more Destiny Dice, because actually we could recuperate again, not that we need to. We could find treasures that way. So we might as well, let's recoup. Um, a whiz, he finds one, and he gets a no, and yes for you. I get the Miser's Chalice, use this card uh, during your turn to unlock any locked Destiny Dice. Turning the blue space on the Fate Board. Lord Castellans, he finds one as well. The Warpstone Bomb. Discard this uh, to use this action. Bomb, 3+, plus. pick a space in your hero's chamber, roll a die for any heroes or adversaries in that space or adjacent to it. 2+, plus. they suffer 2 wounds. On a 6, they suffer 4 wounds. That's awesome. Shard got the Unseen Amulet. You can discard this card at the start of your adversary's phase. Adversaries ignore your hero during this phase. Awesome. Uh, but you can be affected by area weapons. So over here, double sixes. It's going to be a random encounter. And 5-3-1. Encounter will be a... 
13, that's not good. Thick and cloying fog billows up to engulf the champions, scintillating blue and purple vapors in which strange lights swarm. The clouds shredded apart as quickly as they'd come, but in their wake were left Carrick Acolytes who sprang to attack. Roll a die and place this many Acolytes next to the board, starting with the runemark player, and going clockwise, each player sets up an Acolyte as close to here as possible until they've all been set up. Six, see how many it is. Five, uh oh, let's start with you. Here we go, whoop. Next one for you. They can't stand on the graves. Yep. Uh, we've done a shield. We have to do one of this guys. Like so. One more. We've done everybody now, so you can pick any kind you want. Another shield guy. You get to go first. All right. Um, let's do Miss Weaver. Do or it. Or shard. Get him. Not too shabby. No sixes, though. Alright, um, bladed barbs on that guy right there. Sounds good. Two plus. Two plus. Takes a wound. And you roll a six to hit, so you get another attack. Right. Two plus. You roll a six to hit, he's dead. <laughs> well, you can you make an attack, but there's nobody in range. Right, now I can make any action. Oh, any action, anyway, cool. So I can move. Yeah, move. Keep rolling sixes. Okay, that's, that's the end of that. Okay. Reaper gauntlet. Uh, three plus. Get some D3 wounds. He's dead. Whoop. This guy actually has three wounds, which means that last free attack would have killed him. Uh, and you can. But roll a die to see what it is. Because that move that you made would have been an attack. It's not a six. Okay. So now you make now you can make a move if you want with a die. So now. I use this one to move. Sure. Whoop. And then Reaper Gauntlet. Uh, this five. And then Reaper Gauntlet. Uh, three plus. Hits. And you get a free action. So Two wounds. You got one left. Free action. Bladed yeah, barb yeah. on him. Twos. Nope. Misses. Uh, you can reroll ones while you're in the same room as me. Oh boy. Yeah. Hit him. So he's dead. Renown. And then Reaper Gauntlets on the last guy. This sounds good. Guy Two here. plus. Reroll ones. Uh, yep. Those wounds. That's three plus. Oh, it's three plus. Okay, so you fail then. All right, he's all done. We're gonna go battle mage. Come on, Battle Cat, get him. Yeah, here we go. Uh, so it's going to be fives, fours, and sixes. We'll use this one to move. Ah, uh, we'll save the one, actually. We'll use this three, whoop, and lock the five to do a Sorcerer's Blast into the guy with the... Yeah, that guy. Hits, D3 wounds, five, six, he's dead. Nope, takes two. We'll use a four to do it again. Three plus, hits, just needs to take one. Renown, use this one to move. One, two, three. We'll use the six to source for shields, and then we'll shoot him. Hits. Kills him. Oh, sorry, he does three. He's got four because he has a shield. That's right. So he's got one left. And uh, I get another Renown because I use both my shield and my thing at the same time. And actually, I would get a bonus one because I'd done it when I was back here. What are you? Mistweaver. Alright. Whoa! Oh, that's some legit stuff right there. Okay, so let's just go ahead and stun everyone. And a three plus. Done. You do. Everybody's stunned. And soon to be dead. <laughs> okay, so. You'll have to sword some guy. You have to sword him four times. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna sword him. Okay. Four plus. Nope. nope. <laughs> I'm gonna sword him. He'll, he'll live now. Hits for a wound. You got nothing else you can do, really, unless you can break off. That's right. Nah, just keep poking him. Keep poking him? Okay. Nope. That's it. Ah, oh, you can use that one, because your last guy to go. Oh, okay. Oh, no, has Cell Sun hasn't gone. Never mind. Yeah, you have it. That's right. Okay. Well, let's see what we get for actions. Oh, jeez, he's mad. Burn him all with the lantern. Four plus. Ah, it's just a stun. Everybody's already stunned, so it doesn't do anything. Uh, let's halberd this guy. Four plus. Nope. Halberd him again. Nope. Howard him a third time. Yeah, takes two. He's got one left. Howard him a fourth time. Nope. And then they're stunned, so no actions for them. All right, Destiny Dice. Let's see what happens. Uh, double threes? And I think that might go off, because that's based on skills. Well, fours may actually go off as well. So we keep the six. Tweak shows up, because there is a guy with Vigor three or more, but Boone, or sorry, um, this is... Blot, he does not show up because nobody has two or more skills. We have two or more treasures. If Lug had shown up, or sorry, Pug had shown up, that would have happened. Um, so it is on to 
Uh, you have priority this turn? No, you have priority. Oh, I have this turn, okay, you just hand it over to me. Well, I think we're gonna do the whiz. Let's see, we got Battle Mage. I like it. Uh, let's start doing some bolts. So I spent a four, we're gonna bolt this guy. Three plus. He's dead, because he's only got one left. Get a renown, gonna bolt the next guy with a four, three plus. We do, he's dead too, got one left. Five, we're gonna walk over. One, two, three, try and grab him. Dice off. Yeah, he's mine, I got the boon. So I'm gonna grab this to pop the shield, because I might as well, because if we pop open the door and there's a bunch of monsters, we'll all get bonus saves. Um, and then I'm going to spend this one just to dirtle and move so that I have as much line of sight as possible. Over to you. I think the wizards are gonna get in the back, the fighters are gonna get in the front, we're gonna pop the door open. Yeah, so I'll start with the Mist Weaver. Sounds good. And not, you can you can drop that six into your defensive tech. So we'll have all the defensive tech and they open the door. Misty. Yep. Glimmer Mist. Glimmer Mist. This one just to pop in behind my wizard. Remember that's blocked? Yeah, you wanna probably go behind him. Perfect. And then that's it, we'll just kill the other two. All right, let's see what Lord Castellant gets. Lord Castellant. Well, that's not too terrible, not too shabby. We'll use this three to explore. What is it? It is a merry chase. Deep midst scattered lore and flurried flutter page drifts of wisdom. Something strange is stirred. Roll an encounter B. Um, if the heroes have a respite, read passage 10 before it's resolved. All right, so it's been popped open and we have to roll an encounter B, which will be five. One blue horror per player. Whoop. Four blue horrors in the middle of the table. Uh, and these two pillars, of course, blocked. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna do the greatest thing ever. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk forward to the four. Bloop. Uh, to here. I'm gonna spend my warp storm bomb, <laughs> pick a space, and then everything adjacent to it. So I'll pick this space, and then all these spaces. On a six, they take four wounds. Uh, on a two, they take two wounds. So I'm gonna try and pop them all. So two plus, takes two wounds, and pops one of these guys. Takes two wounds, yep, and pops one of those guys. Him, pops, him. No, he's fine, but I popped three of them. Lantern light, four plus, try and stun them all. I don't. <laughs> Just the shard left. Oh, and that's at six. There it is. <clears throat> six, shadow strike. Pop over there. You might probably want to go there, because you can go da, da, da. I can't stand there. Oh, that's right, it's a pillar. You could go, if I go here, there. I three, but then well, I nothing, nothing can be right now. <laughs> yeah. Right, right now, yeah. Well, you can move on on sixes too. Remember, you're rolling ones right now. I'll start there. Cool. Um, I'll do my Reaper Gauntlet on the blue guy. Sounds good. My three plus. Hits. Yep. D3. Times two. Kills him. Nice to clean up the little guys. Two plus. Uh, gets a free action and kills him. Two plus. Kills him. And then my last action. Just burn it. Okay. That's stunned. Uh, so let's roll on the horror table and see what they do. Five. So these guys will nearest hero, flickering blade, looking for two, no, it's sorry, it's a gross one, so it hits on a four. Uh, four ball save, passed. This guy will do the same thing, move up, try and flickering blade me. Hits twice, fours, oh, take two wounds. Ouch. <laughs> uh, and that is turn, looking for some destiny. Destiny roll. Uh, wow, surprisingly no random encounters, and we got almost a straight. The initiative, so it's over to you. Start with the shard. Go clean up. <laughs> one to move. Spend one to move. Plop. Uh, and then two plus, three rolling ones. You kill him. Another one, you kill him, but you get free action. So you can go walk over, one, two. And then explore. It's the final showdown, the fighting pit. Up ahead, the champions heard shouting voices, whooshing flame, and a clanking clatter of some great machine at work. Weapons drawn, hearts thumping, they advanced into the glaring light of a strange chamber. Blades spun and twisted on every side, rendering deadly the high-sided pit in which the champions found themselves. Perched above were a pair of sorcerous adepts, hurling spells and counterspells at one another from atop rotating columns of metal, while a glowing fragment of amulet hung in the air between them. Cultists thronged the edge of the arena, but bellowing encouragement to one another and to the, count, the combatants. Yet all eyes turned to the champions now, and with a great shout, the cultists attacked. Put the fragment of Kamon, marked the symbol above, next to the board, set up a Karak Adept on each of the bladed platforms, and a Karak Acolyte on each, side of, uh, each of the set of stairs. 
Then set up one Care Guy like for each hero. Anywhere outside the fighting pit, the adepts are bound to their pillars. Until the duel is complete, so they cannot move. If the last adversary on the board is slain, the remark player takes the fragment of Kamon and read the ending of the trial at the start of the book. It's getting super real. All right, so I really want to see if I can blow some guys up. We're going to go with the Battle Mage. He's going to get some work done. We're going four. I like it. All threes. That's all we need to do Sorcerer's Blasts. <laughs> We're going to move. One, two, three. Is this one? Is this one over here, which will lock a six? I wanted that six to... It's okay. I got, I got things I can do. I'm going to go one, two, and be done. I'm going to Sorcerer's Blast. Uh, actually, yeah, I'm going to Sorcerer's Blast one of the Karak Acolytes. So we'll do the one up here. We hit him. D3 wounds. He's dead. Ha! We'll gain a renown. We're going to Sorcerer's Blast again into him. Sorry, into... Uh, I don't think I can see him. Center to center. Nope. So we'll do this guy with the glaive. We hit him. D3. He takes one. Then we're going to use this two, locking a five. And go... Oh, we're not going to do that yet, actually. We're going to save that. That's going to be a minute. This last one to blast him again. We hit. D3 wounds. Three plus. No, nope. takes another wound. Spend this two, locking this five. I'm going to go one, two. Whoop. Three. And I'm going to use my Basilisk Tongue. Read this scroll at any point during your turn. Roll a dice for each adversary in the chamber. If the result is higher than their vigor, they're turned to stone. So at a four plus, they're dead, but I get no renown. And a five plus for the guys with the, um, the shields. So four plus, he's dead. <laughs> four plus, he lives. Five plus, nope. Four plus for the glaive, he's dead. Four plus for the glaive, he's dead. <laughs> Four plus for the two hand weapons, he's dead. Five plus for this last guy, now he lives. Slam. Wizard didn't get any renown for that, but he cleared out the room. Your whiz time. Uh, lots of movement ones. <laughs> and these are all unlocked, so actually you can do a, you can do a bunch of things right now. Okay. Four. One, three, four. I just move again, because you'll be able to see. I think you see everybody from there yet. You can even go to there and then you can see absolutely everybody. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Blasts. Yeah. So, illusionary assault on this guy. Okay. Nope. Okay. Illusionary assault. Uh, would you not rather pull that six to put up your thing? The dazzle? Yeah. I have to move into the room to do that. Oh, so right. Okay, that that's last. true. Okay. So well, it's going to lock as soon as you use that, right? Do you have any guys left? I have just the Castella oh. who's badly wounded. <laughs> <laughs> so then what I'll do instead is I'll spend the two Kay. to move. Okay. And then I'll use the six to do. Okay, bedazzling. Yeah. Yeah, it goes off. Is, Everyone's stunned. Is stunned. This is the important stuff as we do our stun uh, and you're done. So it's gonna be Lord Castellan. What do you got, buddy? You're limping a little. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> you're doing great. Uh you are going to Oh jeez, what do I wanna do? I wanna heal with my two. I wanna heal. With my f no, I want to use this two, I guess, to heal. Use this five to move. Go one, two, three, and be done. Adversaries, they all in stun. And it's back over to us. All right, Destiny, bring no more bad guys. We used our Basil's tongue already. <laughs> and it's only good for Phoebes. No, we got random encounter and then this one. So we only have the five dice. I'm going to use the Battle Mage's, uh, whoop, let's put my boon here to reroll these two ones. I got a two and a three, which means the double fours go off, but I don't think anyone has two skills. Immediately comes back and goes and hangs out next to this guy with the sword and shield. And that's that. So um, we're minus one to hit in this room now, though. We're going with Lord Castellant. Let's see what he's got. He's got some dice. He'll spend this one to walk. Going one, two, and just get in the middle of these guys. I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go one, two, three over to here and try and kill this guy so that I can grab him and get this minus one off of us. Um, so my second dice, I'm going to try and hit him. I have five plus. Nope. Uh, I'm going to try and hit him again with actually not that die. I'm going to try and hit him with this two, which will lock the five. On a five plus. Nope. Wow, this isn't going to work. <laughs> um, try and hit him with this three, I guess. Nope. Ah. 
I hit him, takes two damage. And I guess we lantern and try and kill everyone in the room. <laughs> lantern! Nope, doesn't happen. He's gonna go, look for that six we can bamf on top of. Yes. Yay! Go grab him. Teleports, we roll off. Do you get the boon? You don't! Oh. Alright, let's get the bane instead. What is the bane? It's D3 hero dice. <laughs> this is them all. This just ends his turn. Not the worst, but at least the minus one's off of us. Yep. Alright, battle mage. It's all you, buddy. Get him with your stick. You need two stick hits to kill this guy. Ooh, that's pretty serious. Oh, well, use this one. Four plus. We don't stick smash him. Use the two. Four plus. We do stick smash him, so he's down to th one left. I uh, use this four. He's dead. And then we'll use the six for a plus one save, Mystic Shield. And I'll use the five to try and lightning bolt this guy. Three plus, I do. Five plus, he's dead. Zot! He gets smashed. So I get a renown, and I get another renown because of my double damn. So I get to grab two of these. Wellspring, before making your action roll, roll a dice for each wound on your hero card. Now six to get replaced from the stun. If your hero's unrelenting, remove the wound without replacing with a stun marker. One step ahead, once per turn, you can increase or decrease the result of behavior roll by one. If you're here as Celestial, you can increase. This would be great if they're on my Lord against talent. Uh, we'll do the one step ahead. Miss Weaver. It's going to be all swords all the time. Four times, he's dead. Four plus? Nope. What's your dodge? Why don't you just dodge away and bolt him? Sure. <laughs> okay. So a dice for three plus to move. Gets away, gets move, one, and then you can bolts. Three plus, hits, D3 wounds. Does one, hit him again. Does, D3 wounds, five, six, he's dead. Ah, and that's it, bah, he's defeated, and we gain the shard. So this shard is ours for the lore of metal. Now we have to roll uh, for each of our magic items. On a one to three, they uh, crumble the dust. This one's gone forever, the magic chalice. As is yours, you have two more. And good. All right, so they stay. All right, now we have two shards now in our bank, which means we get to keep two. So you have two to three, you get to keep two skills, so nobody's going to be dropping a skill. All right, so there it is. We've slowly built our amulet together, um, and we have a Lord Castellant, who has survived the match and still has Divine Will as a skill. He didn't level up again. Uh, we leveled twice with the Battle Mage, though, or once in the beginning with the Battle Mage. We have Eye of Fate and One Step Ahead. So you've got two magic items, which is going to be uh, Unseen Amulet and Alerios Kiss, and you've kept Evasive and the Tomb of Shard, and the Mist Reaver Sai has got Jaws of Death, which she will keep through this adventure. And there we go, we managed to defeat the Realm of Metal with those Karak Acolytes. Man, we got some really good draws in this one, didn't mm -hmm. we? So we got, first we got the Tile Split, which cut the tiles in, in half. Then I found a treasure that let me look at the top three cards and decide which way was the right way to go. Then I got two bomb items that just like cleared out dudes. I got the, um, what was it, the Warpstone Flask and I got the Basilisk Tongue. And both of those made us that we were just like, whatever, this <laughs> level, we don't care. We just like speed run this thing. Just like went through and we're like ignoring half the cards and killing everybody in the room as we did it. So even though he killed five guys without gaining renown, I managed to level up my battle mage, which is pretty cool. Um, both, all three of other heroes actually Actually, until we do, t this is good because we won't be able to keep skills until we've at least completed the next mission. So if we hopefully all get one more skill in the next mission, um, the battle mage will have to discard one, but he'll get to keep the best two that he can possibly have. And the rest of the party will have two skills that they can keep because we'll have three shards at that point. And you can't have three skills until you have four. So. This is still, we're still in a good progression stage for the party. We're feeling pretty good about the, um, the build of the party in general, actually. You've got the pure DPS, Tebow Shard, mm -hmm. who managed to get some defensive attack. He got like the best possible skill, which was Evade. It's, in the first game, if you guys watched, he shrugs like, you shrug like 12 damage with that thing. It's ridiculous. You just dodge it the way of like a million attacks. The Castellan's got his, um, his buddy, the, uh, the wizard, the battle mage, putting Mystic Shield on him, which is funny because it's really like an AOS thing. Like I tank up my liberators all the time the same way. So the Warding Lantern's healing combined with um, the, uh, the Mystic Shield has been fantastic. And then both of our casters just have backcountry bolts and more defensive tech too. So mm -hmm. it's been pretty great. We haven't had too much of a problem so far, but we'll see. We're going to go into two weeks um, and you'll be able to see us in game three. So we're we're going to the lore of life. We're going to Garan, where big monsters live. <laughs> so thanks for painting this up and bringing it in. Thanks, guys, for watching. We'll see you next time. Tell the mash. Apple Gaming.